How's it going everyone? Rip and Tear Gaming here, and after watching the Dark Ages trailer, the hype is back. For a small trailer, we're able to get a glimpse into what the next Doom game will look like, and know that it is indeed a prequel to Doom 2016 and Eternal. It's hard to believe that Eternal was released four years ago, and we don't have much longer for the Dark Ages. I recently uploaded a reaction video with a small analysis of what was seen, but now that I have watched the trailer a lot more, slowed things down a bit, and zoomed in, I have a lot more to talk about. Before I get going, if you're new here and love everything Doom related, then be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below to get the conversation going and keep the hype strong until the game releases next year. Alright, let's get going. The first part of the trailer is more straightforward in knowing who the Slayer is. He was the super weapon for gods and kings. I love that wording there because it reminds me of when King Novik would say that we would send only you and rip and tear until it is done. We will send unto them only you. Rip and tear until it is done. The Slayer is the instrument of destruction and when used correctly, he will instill fear among those against him. We see that in the trailer is actually in-game footage and nor does it say a work in progress or early test footage, like many reveals show to the public. This shows that id Software was ready to show what they have been cooking up and I imagine that the game will be highly optimized at launch, just like Eternal. The first scene is a battle taking place at a city with floating structures and a pentagram in the background. The city could just be a part of a montage of cities being under attack by the demonic invasion of Argent Dinner, or it is a playable level. The floating structures away from the city could be among the base of operations that the Sentinels used during the Unholy Crusade. Either these ones belong to the Sentinels or the Insurrectionists, or rather the Marauders. It seems like the Dark Ages takes place during the Civil War as we see Hellified Sentinels and other Sentinels attacking the Slayer throughout the trailer. If that's the case, then I would imagine that the Sentinel Crucible will not be playable in the game since that would be in the chest of the Dreadnought at Terrace Nabod by now. We could of course be using the Demonic Crucible, so there's something to consider. Moving on, we see another angle of the same city or somewhere else, then it moves to a wider shot of a bigger city under attack. Something hits one of the towers and at first I thought it was a boulder or something shot from a catapult or something but it's actually one of the sentinel ships that we have seen during the battle at Imora in the Ancient Gods Part 2. There are airships in the background that appear to belong to the Marauders and or Hell, and then the shot cuts to another angle, showing that the city has a large structure that resembles an arena of sorts. I don't think that this city is Sentinel Prime, but could be another city of great importance throughout the campaign. The next shot is a city in the sky. This reminded me of the multiplayer level Empyrean in Doom 2016. It definitely has some similarities, but all in all, this city or structure is important to the wraiths. When we zoom in, we can see the statue in the middle is a wraith due to the horns, among other features. This place could be where the wraiths were kept, and this level could be part of the betrayal. Then we see the Doomslayer preparing for battle in his new, well, updated outfit for the prequel. I can't believe they gave him a freaking fur cloak. How badass is that? I really like the new design of his suit. It's very medieval styled and shows how much he has progressed throughout his time with the Sentinels and the Unholy Crusade. Someone in the community mentioned that it could be possible that he got the cloak from the Doom Hunter looking guy later in the trailer, or someone else and uses it as a trophy of sorts. The design is also very similar to the next iterations of the Praetor suits, making it seem like the predecessor. The location that the Slayer is at is no doubt of maker design and could be used as a hub of sorts, much like the Fortress of Doom to get to and from levels in the campaign. Honestly, I always love the cutscenes of the Slayer preparing himself at the start of each campaign. It really sets the mood and just shows how much of a beast he is. The Super Shotgun makes a return of course, but this time a bit more old fashioned. Later in the trailer, if you slow down the video, you can see that it is a lever action with no stock and the fire mechanism is a flintlock. When the shells are loaded in the barrels, the hammers on both sides lock back and then when it is fired, the hammers slam down and create a spark igniting the gunpowder. Of course, the technology of the Sentinels is different than Earth technology and is completely fiction, but I wanted to point that out and see how creative id Software got with the Super Shotgun. One weird thing though is that since the Slayer is holding the shield with his left arm, there isn't a reload animation for the Super Shotgun. The shells just kind of automatically reload and looks odd in my opinion. The trailer is early footage and maybe the animation will look more polished by the release date. 
Everything happens so fast and most people won't even notice it anyway. The shield is also a great addition to the gameplay. With the saw-like blades around it, we have a different version of the chainsaw. Throughout the trailer, I noticed that the shield has about four different abilities. It can be used for defense, just like we see it being used against the Arachnatron in Hell Knight. It can be thrown and returned to the Slayer. It can be used for a ground slam from the air and it can be used to dash into opponents. I'm sure there will be more abilities available at launch, but let me know if I'm missing anything with it. Anyway, we get a great shot of him slamming down on the ground and knocking demons down, and there's a good close-up of him before the actual gameplay starts up. The Mancubi make a return, but look more grotesque than before. They fire four fireballs from their cannons this time around, and it's possible that they have new or similar abilities from their counterparts from previous games. Something to mention is a group of soldiers off to the right that have normal looking shields. Not too sure if they are Hellified soldiers or just background fodder that you can take out or they are part of the Night Sentinel army. The transitions between parts in the trailer are done very well. We see one of the first new weapons besides the shield and flail. The designer of this weapon deserves a raise at software. A weapon that uses skulls, grinds them up, and shoots the pieces out is one heck of an idea. I feel like this weapon would be similar to the chain gun or the destroyer blade mod from the ballista. This would be ideal for crowd control and based on the trailer, we should be going up against more fodder demons than before. So having something that can cut through them faster is always a good choice. We finally get to see the hellified sentinels more up close. They are obviously replacing the zombified soldiers from eternal as they move the same and have an arm cannon that replaces their right arm. Maybe we'll see variants of them in the campaign, much like the soldiers with the riot shield and chain gunners. The location at this part seems to be a factory that builds Atlans, so I would imagine this level would be where the Slayer gets his Atlan, or at the very least prevents the Dark Realm from destroying the facility. The next shot, we see the Slayer use the charge or pull cord for the shield before throwing it at what looks to be a new design of the Revenant. From what I can see in the trailer, he looks more like a sentinel that has armor on with clothing, maybe chainmail, and of course the ability to hover in the air. Previous designs were augmented humans created by the UAC, so this version is a whole lot different. Plus, he has a sickle type of weapon in his right hand. Definitely going for a reaper kind of design. It would be funny if this enemy is actually called a reaper and the revenant is something we haven't seen yet. After the slayer throws a shield at him, it sticks into him and doesn't return immediately. I would imagine that it requires the player to press a button to have the shield return, much like the axe in recent God of War games. Then we can see another enemy to the right. It's tough to tell initially what the slayer is fighting, but we first see the plasma gun being used. It's slightly different and has more narrow and straight plasma shots rather than the plasma balls, if that makes sense. The enemy that is attacking looks like some kind of beast rider on what appears to be a pinky or something similar. Slowing the video down, you can see the beast rider and his weapon is a bow of sorts. This reminds me of the beast riders from Gears of War 2. We then see the flail in action as well. I'm assuming the flail will be used much like the blood punch or like the doom blade from Doom Eternal. The next scene shows the Slayer in the defensive position with the shield up against an Arachnatron. Their projectiles seem to fire faster this time and are surrounded by floating bring-like creatures. They remind me of Cacodemons due to their arms hanging down, but their functions remain a mystery. The trailer doesn't show them doing anything, but I wonder if they have a support role for the Arachnatrons. Maybe they give them a shield, much like the engineers in the Halo games, and you need to take them out first before defeating the Arachnatron, or they were just there by coincidence and have their own abilities. I guess we'll find out later. The next part shows the Slayer using the shield by throwing it and returning it back to him, cutting up multiple hellified sentinels and zombies. This ability is going to be super useful when you want to take out the fodders that are surrounding you and then focus your attention on the bigger threats. I wonder if when you use the shield like this it will replenish your ammo just like the chainsaw. I didn't see any health bars, item pickups, etc. in the trailer so we'll most likely see more of that at a later reveal. Something that has been a worry for some in the community is the lack of locations for the prequel. Keep in mind there will be multiple locations and even new places we haven't seen before. So far we've seen multiple cities on Arjun Dinur, Hell, and possibly Mars. I'll talk about that in a bit. This current location is definitely Hell as you can see the overall atmosphere of it, such as the fire and brimstone and demonic statues. 
This particular statue is found everywhere in Hell in Doom Eternal. One particular enemy that stood out to me in the trailer is the new design of the Imp. For a while I thought it was an archfile as they do have similar traits. However, this enemy is shorter and doesn't have the same abilities as the archfile. Its software seemed to have gone with an OG look for the Imp this time around as well. After going through the big doors, we see a huge environment with fighting all around. Up in the sky, far away, there are structures that have tentacle looking parts, much like the Amoran ships in the Battle of Amora, so those are most likely on the side of hell. We see the Slayer use the Ground Slam ability with the shield and takes out a multitude of demons and sentinels. Then we see another new weapon that some are calling it the Nail Gun or Impaler. The Slayer immediately uses it on an Imp and nails him to a structure with spikes on it. This totally reminds me of the Nail Gun from Fear which actually stuck enemies to the walls. It'll be interesting how players use this weapon in the campaign. After that, Hell Knight tries to get the jump on the Slayer, but then is faltered and the Slayer follows up with a shotgun blast point blank. I look forward to using the shield for that ability and I imagine we'll be needing to use it a lot based on how the game mechanics are going to work this time around. Right after that, the Slayer uses the shield to dash into another group, sending them flying and we encounter the first heavy demon. Many are saying that this is an Agadon Hunter before being modified by Dag Vranach. I do think that there are some major similarities, but I think they may just be related or a similar species to the Agadons. This particular hunter has modifications such as mechanical legs, a large metal arm that wields a giant blade, and possibly a helmet with those horns attached. The arm even has hints of Imoran tech, and hopefully there's more to that in the lore. When the Slayer fights this hunter, he uses the flail to falter him as well as kicking him. So there will be other ways to falter opponents in the Dark Ages. We finally get to see an Atlan in action by the Slayer for the first time. This has been a community request since Doom Eternal and id Software is by far cherry picking the best requests. I imagine piloting an Atlan will be short, but who knows, maybe there will be multiple levels or only just one time. For a very short amount of time you see the Atlan uppercut a titan on a planet that very much resembles the planet of Mars. I want to say that it is Mars, and specifically the city of Hebeth. This was a mysterious city that sunk into the core of Mars, but before all of that, it was a prosperous port city that discovered the technology of slipgates. You can even see stars in the background and the orange or red dirt on the ground. I bet you it is Mars, and this level is within the city of Hebeth. For a city that created slipgates, it would be a very important location for both the Sentinels and Hell. Let me know what you think. The Slayer then confronts the Mecha Dragon, which is different from the other dragons from the Ancient Gods Part 2, mainly the horns on the face. Uh, these dragons almost look like the Imoran dragons without modifications. Anyway, we get to see the Slayer right in the dragon, and I believe this is the first time we have gameplay in third person ever in any Doom game, not including cutscenes. I imagine with how fast you'll be going with the dragon, a first person perspective didn't work out. I wonder how many people will cry about this. <laughs> the level we see the dragon flying at is no doubt the same place as the wraith location due to the structures and the sign that is the same in the background from what we see earlier. This place definitely has some significance in the campaign. The airship on the right also belongs to the insurrectionists due to the upside down cross and at the end we see the mecha dragon spit fire into the mouth of a titan hinting at a Godzilla reference. There were a lot of things to talk about in a short trailer like this one. It's been like forever since we had something Doom related revealed, and now this trailer is a breath of fresh air. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and please let me know if I missed anything. We most likely won't see any more trailers or gameplay until QuakeCon this year, but I hope I'm wrong. This is a great time to be a fan of the Doom games, so be sure to subscribe and be a part of this growing community. I hope you all have a good one, and until next time, don't forget to rip and tear, Peace.